Dr. Al Sharaf, could you tell us a little bit about the types of cancer or cancer treatments that might have an effect on a man or a woman's ability to have children in the future? Specific cancer that obviously would affect a man and a woman is anything that is to do with the reproductive organs. So in a man, if it is testicular tumors, then that affect uh, their reproductive function. If it's in a woman, then ovarian cancer or uterine cancer will be affecting theirs. As to treatments, then chemotherapeutic agents, uh, some are, have a detrimental effect on the ovarian function and they can, in fact, uh, some of them uh, be quite toxic to the eggs. And so, uh, in some cases, uh, a woman who is in her reproductive function may find that she becomes prematurely menopause as a result of the chemotherapeutic agent. Sometimes, radiotherapy to the pelvis also affect that in a similar way to the ovaries and to the uterus as well. Mm. Obviously, if there is any surgery to the uterus then, or to the ovaries, then that also may be a factor in reducing fertility. And so what should cancer doctors be telling their patients uh, about this issue? Uh, any wo woman who is in her reproductive age who has uh, not completed her family, they should be informed that there are options available to them to try and, and at least give them some sort of a, a backup to their uh, fertility if they need to have, uh, if they d did actually become uh, infertile in the future so that they could use these in the future and that's whether it being men or women. And so can you talk a little bit about the different options for men and women? Yes. Uh, for the men, uh, it is the obvious, of course, is that we could freeze semen uh, for the men. Uh, and that could be just a, a, a rather simple uh, procedure that we could do. Uh, and it is done at any p uh, uh, immediately on, on diagnosis and before any cancer treatment is being started. As to the women, uh, it's a bit more complex because the effect on the ovaries especially uh, uh, is, is, is not very predictable and secondly because the ovaries are a little bit deeper into the uh, woman's body we cannot actually extract egg that easily from that so it becomes a little bit more complex to and the option for the women though are quite now very uh, distinct scientific possible scientific and clinical possibilities and these could be uh, freezing of eggs, freezing of embryos, uh, and even if a woman, for example, decided that she wouldn't like to have any, any fertility preservation process, then in the future they should also be able to know that there is a possibility of having egg donation to, to rely on, although maybe that's a last resort, but that's also a possibility that they could consider. And obviously it's quite important that these <coughs> techniques are undertaken before they start the cancer treatment. Yes, that certainly mm -hmm. is true, especially if the cancer treatment is going to take a long time. Uh, we cannot, a woman cannot start her uh, fertility preservation treatment while the cancer treatment is going on in terms of chemotherapy, because these could be toxic. And then, I suppose for a lot of people, this is a very difficult issue. So, should people be offered counselling about this particular issue? Oh, absolutely. I mean, when uh, I see any uh, woman uh, who, for consideration of preservation for fertility, counsellors are standby. So, once I've finished their consultation, uh, then they go and have an option of seeing First, the nurse coordinator who will counsel them in a different way about how the process is going to be, but secondly, our counsellors, fertility counsellors, who will talk to them about the future and, and what happens uh, in, in, a, in, in different scenarios. Okay. And for people sort of throughout the UK, are there, are there enough fertility centres within the NHS to sort of cope with the demands for this service? I think the, the issue probably will be the other way around. I think there isn't enough awareness uh, in many many places in the UK that there is this possibility of service 
and also there is some hesitation from um, cancer providers, cancer treatment providers about whether they should actually uh, allow time for women and well the men is a short period of time but especially for women to go ahead for this because obviously they're more keen to have the woman go for treatment to try and, and get a, a good cure so there is that conflict of and dilemma about whether to start the treatment quickly or allow a small window where fertility treatment can be done. Uh, so there is, need to be a balance where women are given information, they are counseled, they are informed of what their position is, and then a, a decision is made between the woman, maybe her partner and family, and the cancer uh, group uh, uh, to decide whether there is a window uh, and, and my, again I, I, I'd say that I think it is that rather than the availability of centers I think there are uh, enough available centers to deal with the problem.